Good evening, pilots, and welcome back to Basic Fundamentals for F-15C. This will be Core 7, Air-to-Air -air Refueling. Um, as you can see, we've got the tanker up and ahead of us here. I'm using my radar to track our distance. We're sitting at just under 2 miles. Now, as we approach the tanker, first thing we're going to want to do is let him know what our intent is, and he'll uh, bring up his refueling lights and bring the boom down. Once we get a little bit closer, we'll use our radio menu. So we'll hit F6 for tanker, F1 for intent to refuel. We'll wait for him to acknowledge and he'll tell us what altitude to reach him at. Now, they always say they're given altitude, but typically you want to be about three or 400 uh, feet underneath it. Um, they never typically fly at the correct altitude, but we're close enough here. So we're just going to go slow and steady. The biggest thing with air-to-air -air refueling is slow and steady. Guys, notice that I'm not punching the throttle forward to try to catch up to him. I'm just going to creep our way right to him. Um, once we get in closer, um, I'll give you guys some tips on the things that we want to look at and the guidelines. We'll be using the PDL light. Uh, the PDL lights are two rows of lights underneath the nose of the tanker. Um, they indicate our position and where we want to be and what corrections that need to be made. Now, as we first approach it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gun cross um, right between the right wing and the fuselage. Right where the right wing joins with the fuselage is a good aiming point to um, bring us up to, uh, to refuel. Okay, Remember that the refueling port on the F-15 um, is just to the left um, and behind the cockpit. Um, it does, it's not like a lot of the other aircraft. It doesn't have a refueling bo boom to uh, use the drobes. Okay, so um, we have to fly to the uh, through through the lights. Okay, now I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, and the reason what made me really want to make sure to hit as many details as I could on this one was that uh, I see a lot of them that say, you know, put the gun cross between, you know the right wing and the fuselage, which is good for lineup, but they tell you to hold it there, or, you know, you want to set the nose at this point between the HUD and the and the frame, you know, that only works if your camera view is the same. Okay, so I want to make sure that you guys understand how to really show. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is, once you get close enough, we're going to give him um, ready for contact. Okay, we're going to radio him again. Now, if you radio him too far, he'll keep saying, you know, return pre-contact, return pre-contact. So what you want to do, and I want you guys to see here, is I'm going to... You see our AOA indicator just to the left, or just to the right of our airspeed. I'm going to line that up with the inboard engine on the left wing. And then our altimeter scale, I'm going to line up with the outboard engine on the right wing. And that's typically right about the distance you want to be to let him know that you're ready for contact. So we'll do that here in just a second. There we are, close enough there. So we'll go ahead and hit our radio button and ready for pre-contact. And he should give us the clear for contact. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit left control Romeo to open our refueling um, pod. There's a little door on the forward end of the left fuselage or left left wing, excuse me, uh, that will open up, and that's where the refueling boom will go. Now again slow and steady. Notice that I'm not even paying attention to my airspeed. It's all about visual aspect at this point. Okay, that's what flying formation is all about. Flying formation is all about matching your, what your um, lead aircraft is doing. In this case, it's the tanker, right? So I'm not worrying about, there's no set speed and nothing like that now. Typically, they fly between 210 and 250 knots, but at the end of the day, you have to just pay attention to what he's doing. Now, you don't want to fly the boom into the port. That's his job, okay? What we're going to look at here, I'm going to pause for just a second, is you see the two rows of lights, okay? The row of lights on the left side, just under the nose, indicates your altitude, all right? If the green light comes too forward or too far back on the, air, on the KC-135, okay? So you see where the green light is now. If it comes back further towards the stern, it means we're getting too close to the tanker, okay? If it goes too forward towards the nose, it means we're too low, too far beneath the tanker, okay? So as you come, uh, as it that light fluctuates, what you're looking for is a rectangular square, okay? A rectangular light. The rest of them have like an arrow on them, whether it be up or down. The right side indicates how far forward 
or how uh, far aft of the KC-135 you are. Like right now we see it's close to the, the green light. You can barely see it. It's close to the stern of the aircraft. That means we're too far back. Okay, so we want to inch forward a little bit, and we want to bring ourselves down just a hair. Now, here's the tip. As long as they're both green, you should be able to make contact and maintain it. Okay, but the idea is to get them both in the center, and you'll see that this is quite challenging to do. Okay, um, there are wind conditions at this altitude. Um, I believe we have about a seven knot um, headwind. Okay, so there are things that you're going to be wanting to be ready for based on the map you're on. You know, if you're making one yourself, you can set the um, wind speed to zero, and that's probably very ideal when you're first starting. The other thing is you want to make sure if you're just learning how to do this. You may want to add some axis tuning, uh, add some curvature to your to your axis on the stick, okay, and that will help uh, reduce some of the responsiveness of the aircraft until you become more proficient with this process. So we'll go ahead and unpause, and we'll see this like now. I don't know if you guys saw, but earlier we sh I showed that we were at about half a tank, a little over half a tank of gas in the aircraft right now, okay. Now, once we make contact, he'll say contact, and then he'll let us know that we're taking fuel. If for any reason we break contact, which I will demonstrate real briefly, I'll show you guys what that looks like, he will tell you to return to pre-contact. If he says return pre-contact, it means you've lost contact with the tanker, and we need to line back up again, match our lights up. Okay, and then once again, he'll also alert us that we are we have resumed taking fuel. Once fuel uh, transfer is complete, he will say transfer complete, and he will tell you to break contact. When he tells you to break contact, we're going to slowly come down a little bit, release the boom from our aircraft, we'll close our refueling door, and then we'll go into what's called the observer position. Okay? All right, so unpausing, here's what this all looks like. So there's that green rectangle I was telling you about on the left side. We matched up, so we got our altitude right. And there's the... Uh, Oh, so we're a little far forward, so we're going to pull back just a little bit, reducing throttle. Notice the arrows. So there was the pre-contact I was telling you about. We broke contact for a second. Contact. Now we've got contact again. Now it's just a dance. We're watching our altitude, so notice the arrow. I'm going to go ahead and pause here. On the left side, notice how it shows a down arrow. Okay, if you guys can, I hope you guys can see that well. Down arrow indicates exactly what you would think it would indicate. It means that we are too high and we need to pitch down a little bit. Now, on the contrary side, if we look at our uh, forward and aft position, that's the right row of lights, that indicator right there means we're right where we belong. Okay, so all we have to do is adjust altitude. If <clears throat> never use your air brake, okay, when refueling, don't drop your flaps when trying to refuel. Okay, everything is a dance of the throttle. The right side, all throttle. Okay, and it's a real, it's a fine back and forth movement. Okay, you don't panic if it starts to move one direction or the other. Just make your correction and, and watch for it to change. Okay, don't sit there and focus on your airspeed tape. Do not look at your airspeed. Okay, look at your position to the aircraft. That's what you want to be doing. This is all visual, looking at these lights. That's how you're going to get the best results. Don't try to turn around and see what you need to do to get the boom into into the refueling pod. As long as these two lights are green, the boom operator in the KC-135 will drive the boom down to the aircraft. Okay, so unpausing. There we go, right there, real quick. That is the ideal position right there. Notice both lights, we have that center line uh, green rectangle on the left side. On the right side, same thing. We got a green rectangle right down the center of the row. This is the ideal position. Now, it is very tricky to hold. I want to stress that I am not an expert at this. I just know it's how it's done, and I want to give you guys some good information here, okay? So, we're coming forward a little bit. I'm pulling off the throttle, bringing our nose down a bit. Just constant dance. Down on the nose. Down the nose again. Now we've come a little far forward or far back, so adding a little throttle. There we go. So you guys just keep watching these lights. And you'll see the dance. Reducing throttle. And notice it's not sudden. I'm not like jerking the throttle way back. You do that, you're going to bleed speed off too fast. Just feathering back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's what flying formation is all about. You know, if when you're flying in formation with a buddy, you know, and you got your lead plane, don't ever ask him what his airspeed is. That's not what flying formation is all about. It's all about visual acquisition. Okay? The front, the, your lead aircraft may be able to park his throttle in one spot and leave it there. 
okay? It, it doesn't matter what his airspeed, it doesn't matter what his throttle set to, don't ask him what his RPM is. It's all about the dance, okay? The guy in the rear is going to constantly be adjusting his throttle to maintain that position. You have wind speed changes, gravitational uh, force changes, payload changes, weight changes, right? All these things that are going to change the drag on the aircraft. In our situation here, it's, it's no different. The KC-135, he's got his throttle in one position, okay? But he's experiencing the same weather effects that we are. He's got a much larger aircraft. His drag is going to be significantly higher. We're much lighter. We're much more maneuverable. Okay, so it's a constant dance. Watching those lights. There's that sweet spot again. Be real gentle with your stick. When trying to air-to-air -air refuel, it's really easy to get tense up. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Keep your arms relaxed. Don't try to overpower the stick. These are real smooth, gentle mo movements. And if you find that you're really having to fight it, like I said, this is where you want to go into the uh, axis tuning and, it, and maybe add some curvature, maybe some dead zone if you need to, in order to, to get comfortable with this for a while. Okay, It takes a lot of practice. So pulling that throttle off again. There's the transfer complete. Disconnect. So we're going to pull down. Left control Romeo, close the fuel door. Now we're going to come gently to the right. The tanker get ahead of us a little bit. We're going to get just above him. About his 5 o'clock position. At about a good four to 600 feet, give or take. I like to put him right here where his right wing light is almost at the... Uh, the warning indicator there just to the left of the HUD. Okay, this is the position I like to sort of hang into. The, this is the observer position. So if you were flying with a wingman, you would come up over here because we're done. We refueled. Your wingman would have been on the left side of the aircraft, and he's going to come in now and put himself into position after he radios that he's ready for contact. Okay? So I hope that sums up everything for the aircraft. Notice we had a full tank. Um, remember, big things, guys. I know I've already said it. I'm going to say it again gentle slow and steady movements you know don't try to race up to it don't try to drive yourself crazy you know trying to get this stuff right i hope this helped guys if you liked it make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already and until next time so overkill the hellraisers